Welcome back to the 12th part in this series on this to-do list application. In this one, we're going to hook up our Angular front end so that we can actually make a request to the API that we've just finished in the last video, or at least we've finished it for now. And it's at a state where we should be able to get the data from that API and populate our front end application with it. So let's go into the code. And at the moment, we've got uh, scope.todo list. Now, to-do list at the moment is a hard-coded list of a single to-do element. And if I go to the app that we're working on, you can see uh, you can mark it as done, you can press done, and it's just got this single uh, element that's going to sort of appear every single time. And what we want to do essentially is change it so that this is using that API response instead. So I'm going to comment, comment this out for now and instead I'm going to use the Angular HTTP service. So use $HTTP and this is using what's called Angular Dependency Injection. So it essentially means that you can tell this function to accept a, a HTTP service and it's just going to be passed in automatically uh, the mechanics of which you don't really have to worry, worry about because Angular takes care of it. And in this case I'm going to do a HTTP http.get request and I'm going to request the URL to do slash API and what I want to do with the response from that get request is I want to say uh, then I'm going to do a function which is going to define that essentially uh, so I'm just going to set up those brackets first and now what what are we going to do with this function well we want to set this list here this scope.todo list that we had defined before equal to the response from this API or in other words the API that we defined in this last video and that should be a list of to-do elements which we can then put here on our front end. So to do that I want to accept the response data and that's going to be passed into this function when it gets called and I'm, I, what I could do essentially and at this point, what I should be able to do is say scope dot to do list, like we had before up there, up here, and I should be able to say that's equal to response dot data. So if we go back to the Angular application, I refresh, and you can see now that we're making a request. And this request, if we have a look at the preview, it does return a a list of a single to do element. But this is uh, sort of in correspondence with the API rather than being hard coded in the application. Now, this on the other hand looks a little bit funny. So we have got a checkbox, meaning that the element is sort of rendered on the page, but we haven't got a, a sort of bit of text that says finish this or whatever the element happens to be called. Now, I think we can still add new elements because this is a front end functionality although that doesn't make a request so that won't be persisted so in other words if we were to refresh that doesn't persist but at the moment we want to fix this bug where the text isn't appearing here and the reason it's not appearing is because if you look at the API it's got a, a text a key here in, a, in, a, in the dictionary element but in our Angular application what we're actually expecting is uh, what did I say so I said to do text and this is what the template also expects. If we have a look at our to-do template, you should be able to see somewhere in here that we have to-do text. So we've got an ng bind here that says to-do dot to-do text. So we need to make sure that's aligned instead of uh, what's coming out of the API response essentially. So if I'm going back to the JavaScript, uh, how might I want to fix this? Well, I, ha I currently have a response data list with some elements in it and in fact I could print that out to have a look at it so I could do a console log of response.data and if I go over to the console or in fact you can see it down here I have a single object and it's got amongst some other stuff uh, an ID, a done and a text field but what I want to do is I essentially want to re rename this this text portion of it to, to do text to correspond with what the front end is expecting. 
Now this is quite common that you may want to do some sort of transformation of the API response after you've sort of received it if you're trying to use it in multiple parts in your front end for example and so I'm going to do just to do a sort of quick example of how you might want to transform that API response. Now I'm not going to say this is the only solution but it's, it's just a way that I might want to do it. Uh, so in this case I'm probably going to create a for loop in JavaScript and so that's for i equals 1, i equals 0 it's going to count through the length of response.data and sort of add one to that every time. So in other words, the number of iterations in this for loop is going to be the same as the length of the uh, API response data. And it's going to be uh, response.data. And what do I want to do with that data? Well, I essentially want to rename something. So let's start by instead of defining response.data I'm going to set that equal to a blank list uh, or an array technically in JavaScript I'm just used to Python terminology and what I could do here is for each to do element then I'm going to recreate it in the for loop and it's going to be a dictionary and let's say this is going to be uh, to do dot text and that could be equal to response data and the sort of element in the list dot text and this instead of being called text actually is going to be called uh, what we need it to be called so we want to call it uh, to do text now this is the important bit because we're sort of renaming it but because I'm sort of recreating this to do list here in the for loop I'm also going to give it the done attribute so that we sort of uh, have a reference for this sort of checkbox over here as well but I'm not going to rename it so that's going to essentially just copy it over from whatever it was in the API response and so that's going to be response data at the particular index that you're sort of currently iterating through dot done and then all I want to do to put that back on uh, or inside this to do list is I just need to then uh, push it so scope dot to do list dot push same as sort of dot append in Python and I'm just going to push uh, the to do element for that current iteration uh, so that should scale to as many sort of uh, items as we have in that API response list now if I refresh it we apparently don't get anything because re response is not defined so I've got a typo there just on this done line here if I put the s in there and spell it correctly and I'll refresh that again and now you can see we've got finish this and that's, as you can see the uh, in the network tab, you can see the API response being made there. And it corresponds with what's coming back from the API. Except that we've managed to rename the the text key in the, in the API response to something more useful to our front end called to do text, which is what it was expecting. Now, now granted I could have been more consistent and just called it text in the front end or to do text in the API response but I thought this was a good example of showing you how you might want to manipulate an API response after you've received it within your front end. In the next one then we're going to carry on integrating support for other request types within our JSON API.